my gorgeous ones, Dr. Lucy here. I'm a little bit skew if I can see in the camera, but oh well, it is what it is. Done is better than perfect, as we say often. Um, tonight, I'm cooking low carb lasagna as an ode to Dr. Mary, who published a picture of her low carb lasagna on the weekend. Um, most of you who have seen it know that Mary is now 30 weeks pregnant and she's in total nesting mode. So she's cooking stuff for the freezer and she's cleaning cobwebs and she's doing all those things. Uh, she's at home isolating because her little girl has just got COVID. And so I thought I will cook Dr. Mary's lasagna or my variation of it. In fact, it is a little variation because as you know, I can't just do one thing. So basically I thought I'll show you how to do it. It's so quick, so simple. Um, doesn't have to be fancy and we're just going to start. So I've got, I'm just on Facebook tonight because my iPad's died and I can't kind of seem to work it out. I've just realized I've got a giant, does anyone else do this? A giant fruit bowl with like one avocado in it. Hey Alani, how are you gorgeous girl? Hey Susan. So basically I am just going to start low carb lasagna. So just basically I'm doing it with, I've got these, what do they call them? The ugly fruit. The odd bods, I just got low, these just arrived, well they arrived about a week ago, they need to be used up, which is another reason to make low carb lasagna. And instead of the lasagna, you finally slice the zucchini. Um, hey Angie. Now it's hilarious, so Mary and I are in a little competition with who has the sickest child. <laughs> and uh, I think she probably still wins, but my little girl who's now 18, uh, I've just diagnosed her with glandular fever. So she's been feeling a little bit miserable as well. Uh, so luckily I don't actually have to isolate because that would be slightly bad. And uh, I think I've had glandular when I was a little kid so I'm not even at risk of getting it. So huzzah for me. So of course I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna make the mince. So the mince is the first thing. I've got, you know, some olive oil. Again, you can use whatever fats you like. Olive oil is no good for deep frying. If you're using very hot oil, it's perfectly fine for Hello, Nicole, for normal cooking on just a normal temperature. So I've got my thing over here, and I'm just gonna, actually helps if you turn the stove on. I find that, I don't know why, about you guys. I know my poor daughter, I know, she's got the sorest throat ever. She's soldiering on, but I thought the other day, I said to her, you better come and see me in the clinic so I can actually have a look, do some swabs, get some bloods done. And yeah, this morning, this afternoon I checked, lo and behold, yep, she's got glandular, which is, you know, the disease of 18 year olds, isn't it? Hello, Baza, how are you? So, um, as you know, I totally hate co um, chopping onions. I never chop onions. i am decided to coin a phrase in my children, I'm allergic to chopping onions. Not in the true sense of an allergy, but just, uh, if you don't have to chop them, then good. Onions have a lot of good, val a good, lot of good benefits um, as far as health goes, but they're a pain in the ass um, as far as making your eyes water and whatnot. So I don't know, just a bit of a whack. So I don't know, quarter of a packet maybe, 100 grams, whatever, a little bit. A little bit of chopped frozen onion. I started chopping stuff to get ready. I've got a half a, half of the, what do you call these, in capsicum that needs to go. Basically, as you know, Tuesday night is often my clean out night and I've just barged on into my, into my fridge and thought, what, what needs to go? So there's one capsicum that was half done and this one here, it's a little on the turn, but it wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use it in a salad. It's got, it's a bit wrinkly. Perfectly fine in some cooked um, food. Now here's some news. So there are some people who actually don't tolerate vegetables. They have, so capsicum, mushrooms, they're part of the family that have what are called lectins, which are plant proteins. Some people don't tolerate them at all. Some people will tolerate smaller, small amounts. They are certainly more, uh, they're certainly better tolerated if they're cooked. So if things like capsicum give you gut pain, you'll find that you can probably have it cooked, but maybe not raw. Um, I'm one of these lucky people, I can certainly tolerate it and I do really like the taste of it. So I actually have quite a bit of capsicum in my diet. Hello, Clara. Um, so I'm just doing a bit of a rough chop because as you know, I have no culinary skills other than flinging things together and knowing that it doesn't actually have to be all that perfect. It's rustic, 
let's go for rustic. So tonight's lasagna, lasagna with air quotes, is, I'm actually making a Mexican lasagna. Because I thought, why not? You know, why does it have to be? Hello, Leanne, darling, haven't seen you for a while. Um, it doesn't have to be traditional bolognese flavor. You can make it whatever you want. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna do like a Mexican lasagna, lasagna, whatever the Mexican, I don't even know if there is a Mexican layered dish. Mexican layered with um, the zucchini and the cheese, and then, oh, Penny can't tolerate capsicum or onion, yeah. It, look, it's tricky for them, some people, it really is. It's a true life thing, so some people, you know, think, you know, that they're, they're just being sensitive or whatever, but you know, if you can't tolerate it, you can't tolerate it, and that's just how it is. We can't, not everyone can tolerate things. Um, even small amounts cooked can be easier though for those raw people. Oh, Jenny can't eat capsicum cooked or uncooked. Oh, poo. Well, just leave it out for this recipe. So this recipe, seriously, it's bolognese stuff. So there's, I'm just whacking in two, um, a, a kilo of mince. I've got grass-fed organic mince from Cleavers, which I do like. I mean, I, I don't know anybody from the company, but I like the fact that they offer this as an option. It is expensive. If you can't afford it, don't feel bad. Most meat in Australia is um, grass-fed. So, you know, it's only when they specifically say it's grain-fed that you know that the majority is grass-fed. They do it grass-fed. Um, and the majority of meat is, look, actually, honestly, on organic great big fields. You know, they're not out there spraying the grass with lots of DDT or anything. So the majority of it is what is referred to as organic. So amazing. Organic just really means no chemicals. And lots of us, you know, if you grow your own veggies at home, then the majority of you are doing organic stuff. Now, here's a tip for, these lasagna, for this lasagna with zucchini. Zucchini gets quite wet and you don't want your lasagna super runny. So when I put the tomato based sauce through it, I'm actually gonna make it much drier than I would normally do for a lasagna because a normal lasagna with pasta, the, the liquid is what cooks the pasta. So we want quite a dry um, you know, base. So I'll just give that a bit of a thing. Now, while that's cooking, if I had my lid, I would put it on, but I don't know where it is. And Ta-da. Again, taco seasoning, it's so easy. I just love it. You can put in whatever you want though. If you wanted to make a bolognese, just stick, you can stick in some herbs, you can put some mingle in. Um, but I'll also tell you, because mingle don't use any salt, and I like salt because low carb people, majority of low carb people need salt. So just a bit of a whack in there. Now, while, I'll just give that a bit of a stir. While that's stirring, I've got a tip I wanted to show you. So, you know I love my fancy tea. Two things have happened this week that warmed my little heart. One was that I was doing a coaching call with one of our members on a Friday, a Saturday or something, Saturday. And she's sitting there with a giant cup of this fancy tea. And she said, yes, every Saturday morning, that's my new ritual. She's got the one of my other ones, but it's a bigger one. It's the one that says savor. And I just thought, ah, oh, isn't that nice? So what I've discovered, I have tried so many different contraptions for tea, loose leaf tea. And I'll tell you the worst, if I was doing a choice review, the worst are these sort of little cagey things. They're only good for really big leafed tea. So I'll just show you those. Don't bother with them. You end up with a whole heap of kind of dirt at the bottom of your tea, it's so annoying. So if you've ever had one of those, either a, a drink, one of those glass tea things, or even a, um, like a flask, the inside you will often get this. So basically, that's what I do. It's like my own portable. Yeah, Marie, they're terrible. I mean, I, they look fancy and I like, you know, I'm a bit of a sucker for all the kind of jewelry that comes with it, like the tea jewelry. But these ones, I'm gonna put up close. Basically, they're the inside of, that's the inside of a flask. And so you just have the tea in there. And then this is the whole point of having a saucer. I can then put the saucer, put my thing on it for it to drain, and I've still got my very nice cup of peppermint tea. So that's my little tip. If anyone else has got any tea tips, that would be great. Now, I've got a couple of other things to talk to you guys tonight about, and I actually need a little bit of advice as well. 
just while I'm turning this over. So um, if some of you saw our stories, you will have seen that we bought a caravan. Yay! And um, we took it on its maiden voyage, which was wonderful. We've done a little bit of research. So we have, I think we have most of the stuff. I do take, where did you buy that? Anyone in a flask? Yeah, so um, I have, what have I got here? Let's have a little look. Um, what I had was, that one came in a, it was one of those glass, double glass, jaw, um, double glazed, big long tea cuppy things that you carry around. I made a glass and I actually dropped it. I didn't drop it, I just put it down on some concrete and I just went, oh, I cracked it. So rather than just throw out the whole thing, I rescued the inside and that's what I use it for. I was just having a look to see if I can find another one. I've got about 10 of them hanging around the place. But of course I can't find one now. So anyway, we went on our little maiden voyage, which went very well, and we took tea, which was great. And in fact, that's the other thing um, I did buy is this sort of little scoopy thing. And I think you may have seen some pictures of it, and I probably showed it to you last week. It was okay. Um, oh, Liz, you've just bought a caravan too. How exciting. So what I'd love, because I know that probably some of you are caravanners, tell me the good spots. We live in Victoria, Australia, so, you know, Canadians, don't tell me your spots, but anyone in Australia, tell me. We're planning, we've got a little two-week trip coming up. Oh, sorry, I just whacked in a whole heap of mushrooms that I've just um, chopped before the show. So, basically, I'm just putting in mushrooms, that big pile of capsicum. I'm going to bring my little plate over so I'm not hurting myself. Wiki Camps is a great app. Great, thank you, thank you, Liz. I love what, what I love is that we all learn on a community. Somebody tells somebody something, another one person goes, "Yay, hooray!" Um, so our, so here's another example of um, oh, what somebody written. Kanarung is amazing. Maybe not for a two week trip. Right, okay, yes. Yeah. So we've got two weeks coming up in, it's not till the end of May, but we've got a whole lifetime of caravanning ahead. So, you know, any tips for the future, 2023, might start planning. Um, but here's another, what, what I love about the idea of the caravan is I can still run real life medicine because it's portable. Because, you know, most of our stuff that we do is online. So for those who are lovelies who, who were part of the 12 week mind body rebalance, Friday's coaching call was at midday. And we were meant to be well and truly settled in our little site by midday, but there were roadworks, the thing took longer than we thought, the site was a bit awkward, and I was cutting it really fine. I thought, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I thought, I'll just sit in the car. I took my belt off, I blacked out the, you know, the background, made some fancy background, I thought it'll be fine. Except that my hubby couldn't quite park the van properly. So he's doing that, you know, 50 point turn and he had to keep leaping out and leaping back in. And because he's got that um, engine on and the door open, the bloody car's beeping and carrying on. It was highly distracting, slightly amusing, but luckily, I would think, anyone watching who was on, I think, I think I got away with it. Um, feel free to let me know if I didn't, but it was an example. Another example of our biggest philosophy, which is, um, done is better than perfect. Now that's not to say that you don't put any effort in, but you know, sometimes there's things that you just can't help. And for a lot of, in my old life, I would have got very stressed about that and thought, oh my God, this is gonna be a disaster and spent a whole heap of time wringing my hands and getting angry with my hubby, which would never have gone well. I think most of you know that getting angry with a driver does not result in you getting anywhere faster than you need to. All right, so I have only used maybe, I reckon, 300 mils of passata in this, because as I said to you, I don't want it super runny. So I'm just going to put that on. So I'm gonna put that over there. I'm gonna make, I feel like a camper. I don't have my lid, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere, probably in the sink. Wasn't it annoying? It wasn't annoying, it was just fun. Oh, thanks, Alani, you're gorgeous. So um, I cook my lasagna in one of these silicon things and so you have to put a silicon thing on a oven on a tray otherwise when you go to get it out it all collapses but while I'm waiting for the 
for the lasagna meat to cook, the, silly, the tray is going to be my lid. So now, of course, we just have to chop up the zucchini and then we just assemble it all, lots of cheese and life's good. And you can serve it on the side with some avocado and sour cream if you wanted to make like a burrito lasagna, a burrito zagna. Oh, what could you call that? A taco zagna, whatever you want to call it. Um, tip for young players, I use, this is reasonably spicy for those that don't like spice. So I use one of these per kilo of mints. If you use, you can certainly use it for 500. Oh, you missed, oh, sorry, just, oh, that little comment, sorry, darling, I just missed it. It went zooming up, lots of people jumping in and saying hello, and I just saw a big comment I was about to read out, and it disappeared on me, I'm sorry. Um, but, so the key to this, these are really thin, look, really thin. I've got a very sharp knife these days, as you may recall, thanks to some beautiful member that recommended a knife sharpening service down this way. Um, so, and it doesn't matter if they're not whole because really it just allows you to place it. So, I'm just gonna chop these. They're not wafer thin, but they're not, they're not thick chunks either. So, that one's, that one's quite a thin one. That one's quite thin. But this one, it's just a little bit thicker, but still not chunky. So this is probably the only time in my life where I don't cook chunk. Normally, as you know, I'm a big fan of the rustic cooking, thicker, just hack your way through. Um, you can do it thicker, but then you have to pre-cook it, and that's just a pain. Now, what I'm gonna do, because I don't wanna chop like this and chop my hand off, because that is a, definitely an option, I'm actually just chopping it at half, because it doesn't matter if they're a bit small, if they're short, you're just gonna layer and layer and layer it. So the beauty of this particular meal is it's got lots of, it's, it's really nutrient dense, okay? It's got your protein, lots of protein from meat. Remember, meat actually has vitamins, minerals, and proteins. It's got lots of iron, okay, from your meat. It's got, there'll be some cheese, so more protein. It's got a little bit, of, well, it's got a reasonable amount of fat because cheese has quite a bit of fat on it. If you want to add more fat, you can add the sour cream, but you don't have to. Um, it's got lots of micronutrients. Oh, I nearly chopped a fingernail, not a finger, but a bit of a nail off then. So while this is cooking, let's have a little look. So the thing, a couple of things that happened while we were camping, not camping, caravanning, which is kind of glamping, fancy glamping. There's a couple of things that we need to, that I, that I use to manage my mind. Because remember, for a lot of us, holidays, mean, you know, eat whatever you want. Okay, in our brains we go, oh goody, holiday, it's sort of an ex a little sort of subtext in there, treats, snacks, do whatever you want. So I figure if we're gonna be doing a fair bit of this camping, then I need to be managing my mind around that because it's not a holiday, it's a change of location. Um, having tea. So that's why I decided I'm gonna have my fancy cups in the van. Um, I, we cooked, like we had a barbecue one night and I just made a, you know, one of my standard salads. And the next night I made a red chicken, red curry, just a mingle curry. It was so easy. Um, chuck in, chuck some, oh, if your sauce gets too thick, chuck in some chia seed. Great idea, that's a great idea because that would certainly thicken it up. Um, and give you your omega-3s. Chia has a lot of omega-3. So um, I think it's really important that we do, you know, look to do things to help manage our mind around stuff like that. Because honestly, the whole idea of eating well is to be able to do it the most of the time. You know, most of the time. Not, some people, it doesn't have to be 100% of the time. For some people, you know, there are triggering foods that they know, you know, they know they can't manage. So for me, it's, it is chocolate and lollies. There is no way I could have, for example, a bag of violet crumble, remember those little square ones, and just have one, and then wrap it up and put, put it back in the cupboard. <laughs> it just wouldn't happen. Like, I would love it to happen. I would love it to happen. I've thought about it, I've tried it. I've probably tried it 10,000 times. 
So I now know that little story, just have one. Just have one, Lucy, you can do that. That's just BS. So know yourself well, absolutely know yourself well. And know that when your story, because there are stories that come up. So there are stories that come up for us that we have like subconscious enabling stories. So again, for some people, um, holidays are alcohol time. Again, you know, you're the boss of you, you can do whatever you want. But if you're finding that drinking alcohol on your holidays actually isn't helping you in your other goals, maybe, you know, you wake up feeling a bit rubbish, maybe you wake up late, maybe you're there and you're wanting to get up and do the sun thing, but it, you know, even one glass of wine wrecks your sleep, any of that sort of stuff, then you get to decide. And the way in which you get to decide to do it is not just going, well, that's it, I'm not having alcohol on my holiday. You actually change the story in your head. So the story in your head stops being, alcohol's fun, alcohol's my wind down, alcohol's what I do when I go on camping, alcohol's what I do at the end of the day, alcohol's my Friday night treat. You stop all those stories and you change them. And you change them to things like, I love a cup of tea at the end of the night. Camping is not a holiday, it's just a change of location. They're so, they seem so subtle. They make such a big difference. That one was in the last podcast. Oh, great, awesome. You know what, sometimes, so Mary and I record our podcasts often in batches, and sometimes I can't actually remember what we're up to, but I'm glad that that one helped. I think is, um, is today's, is today's podcast self-soothing and self-care for anyone who's listened to it yet? No, no, I've listened to it yet. That's okay. So, um, by the way, uh, this this saucy stuff's ready. So, you can just see. It's not super runny. Uh, oh, sorry, darling. There's sometimes on Facebook, the little comments just go so quickly if there's a little flurry. When I ask a question, I can't actually see the answer if more than about three of you answer it, which is not to say I can't go back and answer them because I certainly will be going back. Um, so basically, I'm putting my, you, with your lasagna, always put a meat layer on the bottom. Otherwise, you, if you, you know, in the old days, if pasta sticks to it, and same with this one. So I've got my meat layer on the bottom. I'm just getting my zucchini layer and just spreading that out. Now, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect but I would like it kind of, I'd rather have it overlapping than, than big gaps, because otherwise it's hard to, um, you know, you don't get your layers, you just get mush. So that looks pretty good. I might actually put a bit of it there. Yeah, so I'll show you. You see that? Yep. So then, like all good lasagnas. Now I did, I'm confessing I didn't grate my own cheese today. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I'm just doing a sprinkle. Okay, sprinkle of normal cheese. And I've got a little bit of mozzarella. I've finally got through the great cheese mountain that was in my fridge. So, um, <laughs> Susan had more short answers, not essays. <laughs> was it you, Susan, writing lovely long sentences? Sorry, darling. Um, the, what I did, because I do my online shopping, and sometimes I don't actually have a look to see what we've got. I just order the same stuff because, you know, I have, I, I, I like a limited menu. It, it reduces decision fatigue. I can change it up a bit by, yeah, you know, making, instead of having taco bowls, I'm making taco lasagna. But they're the same ingredients, really, let's be honest. It's nothing magical. Um, but anyway, what happened, what, I, what was happening was I got to the point of this gigantic cheese mountain in my fridge with like six packets of grated mozzarella and six packets of normal cheese because my kids eat a fair bit of cheese and then I was also grating my own cheese from time to time and I thought oh my god so we had enough cheese for about you know 16 months anyway we're finally getting to the end of the great cheese mountain okay so that was another little bit of lasagna and now a little bit of this stuff zucchini courgettes Great, this is great if you've got, if you've got, if you're a home growing zucchini person, because you know those giant marrows that are really annoying and you sort of wonder what the hell am I gonna do with that? Yeah, you can turn it into this sort of lasagna. 
Great. So again, completely covered it. Now, some cheese. Oops. I got a bit carried away there. Maybe I'll keep some of that for the next layer. So what I'd love, so that I can go back and look, for all you caravanners, please give me your tips. Um, and for um, tea drinkers, my tip, as I said, is that inside bit. I'll put a picture of what I'm talking about. Don't go and buy one just for the inside of it. But if you had one sitting around, particularly if you're not using it a lot, or a tea flask, which is just basically like a um, thermos, but specially designed for tea, they're quite good, but um, you know, they're not fancy, like a cup. Sound like my kids, Alani, sound like my kids, Alani. <laughs> oh, you girls are funny. So um, I'm just ending with a meat layer. I haven't really, I've got just a tiny few bits of lasagna that I'll just stick on top. Lasagna, what do you call it? Yeah, lasagna, um, zucchini, because I could always chop up another one. Maybe I will do that. Since I've got another lasagna, another zucchini here somewhere, I'm an oddball. Does that, do other people do this? Buy the odd bunch, buy the, um, the you know, leftovers. Mary's officially jealous. This is Mary's lasagna. I'm calling this Mary's lasagna. It is a tribute to my beautiful business partner, Mary, who is an absolute superstar. And you know, I'm lucky to have her in my life. And I'm lucky to be running a wonderful business like this that really does allow me to live my passion helping people with their, you know, motivating, helping them navigate their crazy brains. As we always say, um, you love the odd bunch, beautiful. In fact, maybe, maybe we should rename our group the odd bunch. Sometimes I think we are a bit odd. Um, but helping people unpack those very, very reasonable stories that keep us stuck sometimes in our paths, in our quest for the holy grail of good health. Um, and you know, just I think the idea that you know I can take this business and do it in a caravan. I'm, I am like Dr. Seuss. In fact, you saw my meditation reel. If you where it was meditation, you can do it on a plane, you can do it on a train, you can do it here or there, you can do it anywhere. If you happen to have a babbling book, that's helpful, but you don't need one. And that was my little tip for the weekend. And we were so lucky because we were near some beautiful babbling brooks. So here we go. How easy is this? So like in some sort of miracle, I've actually put the oven on in advance, so that's good. So I'll be able to show you. So this did take half an hour of prep, but that's also because I'm yakking my little head off to you guys. I reckon you could easily do it in 20 minutes because it didn't, really didn't take that long. And I'll just top it off with a bit of cheese. Finish off a crazy old bit of mozzarella. Put the rest on. I'll probably put a bit of foil on top of this for the oven because the I don't like it when the cheese goes all brown and the rest of the thing's not cooked yet. And that's it, darlings. Dr. Mary's low carb zucchini taco zagna. That's it. All right, my lovelies. I'll see you tomorrow morning where this week we're talking all about fasting tips. So yesterday and today, if you haven't seen the lives from 8 a.m.-ish, they're both on fasting and I'll be doing, giving you another one of my fasting tips tomorrow and every morning this week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Oh, sorry, could I ask one favour? A really big favour, it is a really big favour. If you listen to our podcast, and I, I hope you, I, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you do, we would love it if you happen, if you could take the time to write a little review. You can do it on Apple Podcast or on Spotify now. It's a little bit, um, if you can't get to the point of writing something, because sometimes that's d um, difficult depending on your iPhone or whatever, whatever you're listening to it on, um, if you just put some stars, what it does is it keeps us in the top of the charts. And we have been very blessed because our podcast has been certainly in the top 20, but usually in the top 10 for nutritional podcasts in Australia. And you know, as people out there trying to get low carb real food message, it's really helpful if you could help us just keep it up the top there. That would be wonderful. All right, lovelies, have a beautiful, beautiful week and I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Bye for now.